Diamond bikes, suspension and tuning, take one. It's a huge world out there for red shred treading on a mountain bike. And man, I don't know the first thing about it. Hi, I am retired professional triathlete, CEO of Diamond Bikes, TJ Tollickson, and we have the latest creation out of the diamond mine, the Diamond Rock. Okay, it's spelled R-O-C-H, that's pronounced rock. And we'll give you a little background on what rock means. It's actually a slang word in uh, British that means like a lewd dude. Uh, so this is our lewd dude new cross-country race bike and I myself am not a cross-country mountain biker. I own a cross-country mountain bike, but it's not me. I don't know a lot about it uh, other than how to ride one of these bikes and so I have to have experts and smart people around me to teach me all these incredible things. So today we're here to talk about the rock and specifically about suspension and so I have resonant cross-country mountain bike expert Jordan Costello. Jordan is our lead mechanic at Diamond Bikes. He is also an incredible mountain bike racer. He knows how to tune these things, how to race these things, how to manufacture these things. I mean, he really just knows everything about mountain bikes. So uh, Jordan's here today and we're going to talk about the rock. So Jordan, first off, what makes this bike the bike to buy? It's a full race geometry. Um, it's got a uh, short head tube and it's uh, super aggressive for climbing and descending. Uh, feels very comfortable on all terrain. Okay, so is there anything special about this bike versus somebody else's mountain bike? Like what, what's, what's different? Well, first off, look at the color. You get to do whatever color you want, whatever paint. Um, that's the first thing. Uh, the head tube is actually a little bit steeper angle, um, just makes it a uh, shorter wheelbase and uh, more agile. Awesome. Uh, how about the handlebar? What do you think about that? They're that pretty handlebar? awesome. It's just one piece. One piece, bar stem. It's a cool setup. Uh, it comes in varying stem lengths from 80, 90, 100, or 110 millimeter stem lengths. And then it just comes wide, um, 800 millimeter wide bar, and you can cut it down. Jordan, just give me an estimate of how wide your bars are on this bike right uh, here. These are, I think, uh, 700. Around millimeters. 700, right? So they're cut down 50 mils on each side. I don't recommend cutting 100 mils off of one side of your bars. and Unless, unless you're racing NASCAR, so I'm just doing <laughs> right. left. Unless you're right. just going left. <laughs> right. Uh, so let's 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 keep that in mind. So chop 50 mils off each. That gets at the 700. Uh, that's changed a lot over the years because I remember when cross country bikes first came into play. Guys were riding like super narrow bars, so they were like riding their bikes. Like Some this. people like, still do, but they do. Not huh? very common. Right. Uh, Mostly so the old guys. Old guys. Yeah. Sometimes you need tight clearance between trees and stuff like that. But uh, I know enough from even watching you ride that you can get through spaces narrower than the 700 mils on this bar yes. um, with this and it's pretty incredible to watch you tilt it's the just bike. Just a little and, tilt. And, and yeah, it's, it's impressive. So uh, it's all possible and the better you, the rider you are, the easier that is to do. Um, all right, so that's what's cool about the rock. That's why you should get one. Um, so now I decide I want the rock and I can tell you right now, the first question that I'm gonna have about this bike is gonna be about the suspension. So, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, I know I want a rear suspension and a front suspension. Talk to me about it. Where am I, where am I going? What should, what should I be looking for? Um, so it kind of comes to a price point there. Um, you could go, I mean, you could spend $1,200 on a fork. Um, not saying that's gonna be the best fork for everybody, because um, some of those are just built off of lightweightness and not necessarily for the longevity of how long that fork's gonna last for you and how easy it is to service. Okay, so right now we've got a RockShox Sid Ultimate SL on there right now, which is pretty top of the line fork, right? It is. Uh, as far as cross country forks, I think this is like what most of the guys racing in World Cups are racing A lot right of now. them are, yeah. Um, so it's a cool fork. You can also, you, you know, Fox makes an equivalent one, similar price point. There's a lot of manufacturers. MRP makes, uh, makes forks that are in yep. this price range as well. 
Um, all right, so now we've got a couple different styles of forks we talk about. This one, I see has a cable that runs from it up here. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so that's a remote lockout. Um, so that way, if you're ascending, uh, you can go ahead and lock it out, or if you're riding some pavement. So uh, just vocab check real quick, ascending. So that means riding <laughs> up the mountain, right? That's going yeah, up the yeah, mountain? Okay, yeah. all right. All right, just make sure I Yep, so attention. that you're just, uh, your bike's more efficient that way um, over smooth surfaces and when you're putting down a lot of power. Um, but overall, if you're riding a trail, you're gonna be unlocked most of the time uh, just cause it keeps your tires mounted on the ground. Uh, when you're going over bumps and stuff, that's what the biggest thing is suspension is your tires always gonna make contact. That's why a full suspension's awesome too. It keeps your rear tire yeah. on the ground. Yeah, which is important because that's also the drivetrain, right? So yeah. you're only pedaling, you're only moving the back wheels. So if you keep that on the ground with the full suspension, it's really nice because that allows you to pedal yeah. the entire time. Yeah, a lot of people think full suspension is only really useful when you're going downhills. Um, it's almost more useful going uphills. You go over a little road or anything, your tire is going to stay in contact with the ground and you're going to be able to put out power and go up it. Okay, so show me how this lockout works right here. It said it's 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 so twist this here. one's just a twist here, um, so that's locked out. Um, it's just got a little pop button here. You pop it and it's there unlocked. we go. There we go. That's simple. Okay, so this one has this lever that does this. Uh, less expensive forks might have what type of lockout mechanism on there? Uh, so it would just be um, just a manual lockout here, so you just don't have a remote there. Which right. So there's a little button or a yeah. dial there. That Which you... isn't the end of the world. Um, all it is is you're going to have to take your hand off the bars and twist it. Where this, you can keep two hands on the bars and okay. be able to do it, you know, real easy, real cool. fast. Cool. All right. So now talk to me about the rear shock uh, that's on here. Talk to me about this shock first, and then we'll talk about what, why you choose this shock versus another and, and what's cool about it. Yeah, so this one will have uh, three modes on it. Um, one will be fully locked out. Um, which you just use that if you're riding pavement or you're doing a sprint or anything like that. Um, then it will have like a trail mode. Um, and that is kind of locked out, but not fully locked out. So it has a little bit more resistance in it. Um, and then you just have descend mode, which is fully open. Fully open. So that just, man, that, that goes. Ready to rock. All right. So the travel on this bike is 100 millimeters. Uh, so explain what exactly we're talking about when we say the travel on the bike is 100 millimeters. And then I want you to answer, is that enough travel for most people? Um, for racing, it is definitely enough travel. Um, if you're getting into, you know, downhill or something like that, obviously, that's not enough travel, but for cross country, which this bike's designed for, it's more than enough. Okay, so what does, what does it mean? What's 100 millimeters of travel mean? Um, so your fork will actually travel 100 millimeters. Okay. So it just gives you that much uh, movement in it. Okay, and then what about a rear suspension? Um, so that's just how much it will, your rear tire will move up. Okay, all right. So uh, can we adjust this? If, if the travel on this is 100, should I go out and buy a 150 millimeter travel front fork and put it on here? No, nope, no, because it's going to change the whole geometry because um, your axle to crown will be a lot higher. Um, so it'll just throw off the whole entire bike and make it not track in. Okay, so outside of 100, what would be like, what, where, where could I kind of um, get away a with? A 120 would be... The kind of the max of what yep. you'd want to do. And even that, that's gonna, that's gonna rake this front wheel out more, so it's gonna increase the wheel base. Yep. It'll make the bike more stable. And it'll raise everything up a little bit and change your head tube just a right, little bit. Right, but yeah. it's also gonna make it less nimble, right? Yes. Yeah, so longer, right? All right, um, that's cool. All right, so now we got this. I got my bike, I said, man, I am Daddy Warbucks. I've got this thing, I'm going RockShox, Sid, Ultimate SL on the front, RockShox, Monarch, RT3 on the back. I'm spending all the big money, I get the bike. Now, how do I tune my suspension? All right, this is a million dollar question. Okay. Still, they're still doing research on it too. Okay. <laughs> it's an always evolving uh, technology. All right, so where do we start? Um, the easiest place to start is with your SAG. Um, a lot of fork and uh, manufacturers will have uh, recommended for your weight. Um, obviously, that's not 
you know, true to everybody. Um, but a general rule of thumb is you want to do 20 to 25 percent sag on it. Um, so you'll actually get on the bike um, and start with what they recommend for air pressure. Um, and then you'll sit on the bike, get off it, and then you'll measure. Um, so a hundred mil fork, you'd want 20 mils of sag. Okay, so again, uh, I'm really stupid about this stuff. So how do I, how do I measure that? Um, well, do they do, that? on some forks, they actually have a so way I to measure the expensive that. one. Yeah, that's, yeah, so you would actually just sit on the bike, um, bam, bam, and then bam. once you get off, that would uh, tell you what your sag is, because it would come back up all the way. Right, cool. So this right here says, we can get a close by this later. A few moments later. It says 100 millimeters, and then it says 10%, 20%, 30%, and then there's little hash marks in between for the halfway points. So, boom, you kind of know right there. Um, so how do I change it? How do I actually make the adjustment uh, to do this? What, uh, what you do just use a shock pump. A shock um, pump, yep, okay. And it would be just like a tire, but uh, it's a little bit different pump because um, it's a low volume, high pressure. Low volume, high pressure, LVP. An LVP. LVP <laughs> pump, so uh, it's kind of like those spray guns in the paint booth, right? Yeah. That's high pressure, low volume. Uh, I don't know, that, that's yeah, a Steve question. Uh, yeah, we gotta talk to Steve about that, but all right. Um, so low volume, high pressure pump. Yep. Uh, and so that's what, pumps this up. Uh, they make portable ones that you can carry with you, right? Yep, uh, do yep. you carry one with I you? I don't. You're at, you Once don't you're carry set, pump? All right. All right. But you have set. one that you keep in the shop, so when you need to adjust it, you can adjust that. Um, all right, now the rear shock. What do we do What do we do we for this thing? It would be the exact same thing, just on the rear there. Okay, and we, we went all out on this one, so we got more labels right here. So it's got this right here. It says it's got a 20, 30, 40% mark on there, um, so you can kind of see. And then uh, right now, this is a, this three position, same thing. You kind of have to take your hand off of it and kind of yep. click it. Um, and so it's just one of three positions on yep. there. That yep. And you can get them so that uh, they do have a remote lockout with them too. Um, Where do it, you put that? So it would just travel down just like what your brake line does. So it would just travel down in the frame and then pop out. Okay, or you can run it. Yeah, I mean, you can yep. run this yep. right, boom, right here. So there's a little space right here. Super clean. Uh, for this to come out, it pops out here. Um, so you can have another remote lockout there if you want to do that. Um, and then uh, the last kind of suspension piece that we're just going to briefly cover because it's kind of its own topic. Uh, this has a regular seat post on there, and I see that's cool. This is a 31.6 seat post, but the other big suspension point are the dropper posts, right? Um, and where do you start with that? Um, so the biggest penalty that you would get for a dropper is that uh, it's heavier. Okay. Um, it's about a pound, pound and a half heavier, um, and it's a weight that's up high. Um, but what you do get out of it is you are able to lower your whole saddle down just with the push of a button. Um, so that way, if you're going down a hill and stuff or hitting some jumps, you can get your saddle out of the way. Right. That way you can lean back and not worry about getting caught up on it. Right. Yeah. So that's the nice thing, right? It's, it's the dropper post allows you to drop that saddle so you can counterbalance on the bike so you can avoid tipping over, especially yep. on steep downhills, right? So you can get way back over the bike, sit down, um, does the same thing. Even if you want to just manual over some jumps, right? It's nice um, to get it out of the way. And you need to, you need to just get your butt back over the rear wheel you can drop that post and, and get over there. Um, we might actually have some video footage of me manualing on a BMX bike, not a mountain bike. But if you want to watch Jordan actually manual on this, we can get some footage of that. He can do that well, um, as well as ride wheelies and the rest of that. So um, cool stuff. Uh, so dropper post, do you race with a dropper post? I don't. You don't. And you don't because the weight. The weight penalty. And, and you're so pro, you don't really need it, right? Uh, so, I mean, sometimes it'd be nice, but sometimes it'd generally, be nice. just don't use one. Okay. Uh, it is one more thing to think about. Okay. All right. So, last couple of things on this bike. So, this has flat pedals on this. Why does this bike have flat pedals on it right now? Because it's a demo bike. It's a demo <laughs> bike, right? I just want to make sure you guys knew that, that these are not the pedals that we actually race on these bikes. Uh, Jordan, the pedals you personally use are what? 
Well, I'm using uh, Times right now. Times, right? Okay, so he uses Time pedals, uh, mountain bike specific pedals on there. It's not these red flat pedals that are on here, but this lets anybody jump on and test ride it to see what the bike's like. And you could be wearing your sneakers. You don't have to have your bike shoes on. Um, the last thing I want to touch on are these wheels. Um, so you hand built these wheels yourself yeah. right here. Uh, talk to me real quickly about these wheels. Uh, so it has a 25 mil wide internal on them. Um, so that way you get uh, a great interaction with the tire and rim combo. Um, they are also tubeless, um, which is another huge thing for mountain bike. That way you can run lower tire pressures and you're off road. So the, the odds of hitting a thorn or a rock or something like that is way higher. Awesome. And so these are uh, Supreme uh, spokes on here. And what kind of hubs are those laced? Those in? are DT Swiss 180s. DT Swiss 180s, the creme de la creme for mountain bike hubs right there. Those are full ceramic bearings. Uh, that front is 15 by 110 uh, axle uh, spacing on it. And the back is boost uh 12 by 148 mm -hmm. um and it's got the exp ratchet in the hub this bike is absolutely amazing it's fun to ride it's great you should check it out uh and again you can have this in any color you want uh whatever you want so that's hopefully a little uh info on suspension how to choose your suspension how to tune your suspension uh anything else you want to add jordan just gotta ride it get used to it have fun Right, that's what it's about. That's why we have bikes, right? We wanna ride them and have fun. All right, that's what we got today. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope you join us next time.